All right, my friend, uh, now it's time for the second part. In this video, I would like to print at least something on the screen, namely a char and a string. All right, let's jump into the code. So we left from the previous video here. We have our loop that is constantly searching for the sentinel value percent sign. In that case, it's going to spark the parse format, which is just a parser. And then we have the render format that we still have to do. On the contrary, we are going to just write in the buffer, in our 4K buffer, the actual char. Then we simply increase with pointer arithmetic our pointer to the string. After the loop, we simply flush the buffer. Namely, we are going to actually see the result of our printf. Then we are going to clean up with the end and the free, our 4K buffer, and we return the chars written that are stocked internally inside our data structure, right? That contains, uh, here you can see, chars written, right? <clears throat> Perfect. Now, I want just very briefly check for eventual bugs because uh, my problem is that I'm doing this kind of live. I have a flowchart that I check here on paper, but I think I should definitely only copy the code. <laughs> that would be a lesser pain. A few moments later. All right, everything seems fine in my parser. As you can see, it's a pretty short parser. I try to make the code as dry as possible. Let's check the utils. And boom, here I have a mistake. I use at pointer byte plus plus equals zero, but it's not zero. Here should be a value, right? Because we pass as an input value. We can set uh, um, whatever byte. So another mistake here, I have to pass a byte, which is simply an unsigned char. So byte, let's change the prototype event here. So my main set is taking a byte here. A byte is simply a type def, right? That we have at the very top. Type def unsigned char. Basically unsigned eight bit because a char is just one byte integer. So my main set takes um, a generic pointer, void pointer, takes a value ranging from zero to 255 and a size T N. All right, and it's gonna set everything to value. Perfect. I think we are okay then. Maybe later while running the code, we can see other bugs that are lurking somewhere. All right, just before doing render format, I would say that it's time to implement this write buffer function, right? So very simply, let's do edit uh, a file that I call buffer.c. As always at the top, we include our header, so printf.h. And what is the gist of it? Well, basically we have this big boy, right? Uh, you can see here the square bracket. We have a 4K buffer. Here you can see in my um, H file, we have a char star buffer and buffer index, right? So we have a cursor that I call buffer index. The actual 4K buffer, let's do for the sake of simplicity on the same line, but just assume that this is a 4K big beast. So very simply, this scenario is this one. We have the string at the level of the printf function, right? When we stumble upon a char, which is not uh, the percent sign, the sentinel value, like in this case, these are. I want to stock in the buffer, this char. So I will have a function that now we're gonna do, which is uh, write buffer, right? Write buff. It's gonna do exactly that. It's gonna take as an input uh, the char, upper har, and it's gonna print here. So it's gonna put r in our buffer. Then we move on in the loop and we're gonna do a, so we're going to move as well our actual index. So it's going to be a void, a write buffer. And as an input, it's going to take data, right? We pass all the, the thing with a pointer by reference and an actual char, the thing we want to stock in our buffer. So char C. What is the thing, the first thing that we have to check? Well, we have to check if our index is already uh, outside the buffer, right? If we have an overflow, basically we have to check if um, data buffer index or buffer cursor, call as you want, is equal to what? To buffer size. Well, if this is the case, I, it's, it means that I have a, a field buffer. So we need another function, which is flush buffer. So a function uh, that is going to basically <clears throat> flush the buffer and bring to the, um, to the position zero, the actual cursor, the actual uh, index. 
So I, I will give as an input as always data. Inside this, there is everything. So the thing is that refresh index and write str in stdo out. So to do. If this is not the case, well, you simply stock the actual chart given as an input in the position uh, indicated by buffer index. You simply do data buffer in position data uh, buffer index. Then you can do plus plus. You increase with a post fix is equal to what to see done. So you see how this write buffer is a smart function that first of all checks if the buffer is full. Cool. If this is the case, flush and refresh. On the contrary, just talk inside the buffer. All right, let's go to write here uh, in my editor file. So let's do buffer. Function is going to be just copying this and pasting here like that. Now let's implement flush buffer. And this is a very useful function that is going to be called um, um, in two scenarios, right? First, uh, when the loop is over, namely when the string is over, string is over. And I'm talking about here, right? Let's go back to printf.c. And you can see that after the loop, I have a flush buffer. Indeed, I finished my string and now I just want to see this. The second case, of course, is going to be when uh, you just saw when buffer is full. So when we have 4K charts. So it's very useful for these two scenarios. So let's do void uh, flush buffer. And as an input, I have uh, the usual pointer to data. So I have access to everything. What do we do? Well, to flush stuff, we're going to use the system called write, right? We're going to write in standard output. Uh, so um, write is a very handy function because it's going to return me also the chars that are written. And that's exactly what we need for the printf, right? Because we have to return the charts written. I'm going to do like that. Data, um, charts written. I'm going to do plus equal. I use plus equal here. You understand now why? Because flush buffer can be called more than once. So I need to accumulate. It's not only a one go function. I do write. Then we need the file descriptor, which is going to be um, standard how to put a file number like that. Then we need um, the actual pointer to um, the buffer. So we're going to do data buffer very simply. And then uh, we have uh, um, the actual size, namely the bytes that we want to write. Here for the size, I have to use uh, the actual index, right? If I do data buffer index, I'm done. You understand why? Let's just copy this. Uh, let's assume I have this random and then backslash uh, zero. So the thing is finished. So here at R is going to be zero, right? The index and then one, two, three, four, five, reach this position is going to be six. So exactly like the charts, right? The charts that I want to flush. So the index, it's fairly useful when I want to write in standard output the actual charts. I will use it as a string length value. You see? So this is the flushing. Uh, write is going to uh, flush in stdo out plus stock charts written. I think it's a good uh, implementation. Then what I need to do, I told you that um, the flush buffer is going to be called many times if the input is really big. Is if it is bigger than 4K, it's going to be called at least one, two times. Uh, if it is uh, 9K, it's going to be called three times, right? So every time I call the flush buffer, I need to refresh the actual index. I have to bring the index to the very beginning. So um, for the next call, everything is going to be brand new. Refresh after call. So to refresh very easily, I'm going to use my memset function. A generic pointer would be simply buffer. The value is going to be a byte value, namely an unsigned char. So it's going to be zero to refresh. Size t is going to be buffer size, of course. Boom, right? So we have refreshed all the buffer. Now we simply have to refresh the actual index. So data uh, buffer index is equal to zero. We are back to the beginning. Okay, so basically here what happens. Um, I have this string. 
I'm gonna zero everything again and put the actual uh, index to the beginning, to position zero. So we jump from this scenario, we flush the standard output, and we start again. And very simply, I'm gonna copy this prototype and put in my header like always. So here we are. Boom. Done. So I have a function to write in the buffer and a flush buffer. The visualization of what is going on with the code is this one, right? We are writing in a big 4K buffer the letters. Then we stumble upon the percent sign. That's another story. All right, let's go back to the printf. And now it's time to implement the actual render format function. Here is where the real action is taking place. So here locally in my printf file, we're going to write this function, uh, which is going to be void render um, format and the data. So a pointer to the data. So basically, what is the idea here? Basically, I want this to be a wrapper for um, all rendering functions. What we're going to do, we're going to say char specifier and the specifier is going to be a data uh, arrow specifier. We're going to fetch. I'm just doing this to make the code more readable, even though it's not necessary, arguably. Here I made a mistake. Format format dot specifier like that. Okay. Then what do I do? Well, I have to make like a ternary thing. I have to say, for example, if I don't know if a uh, uh, percent sign, right, is equal to specifier, you do something. Uh, else if c is equal to specifier, you do something else. Else if uh, today we're going to do also strings is equal to specifier. Again, you do something else. So for these two, I would say you simply use the function print uh, print char, print char, and it passes as an input the percent sign directly. Of course, I have also to pass data because inside this struct I have all the variables that uh, need to be updated. So here we are. I just copy this and I passed also here, but this time uh, I have to actually fetch right print char and then i have to call va arg right data um ap and the type is going to be an integer right for a char why is that so the thing that is going on here why i use an integer and not the char because something which is called type promotion basically this is something that implicitly happens underneath the hood performance wise right for performance reasons here you have a quote from the Cunningham and Ritchie book that states type conversion takes place when arguments are passed to functions in the absence of a function prototype like in the printf right we have a variadic function we don't know which data types are gonna come as an input char and short become int and float becomes double so we have a default type promotion TLDR, well, you know that at the very end of the day, we have integer and real types inside our RAM. So a char is one byte integer, a short is a two byte integer, a float is a real four byte value. What happens if I have a char, I won't get a char. If I have a short, I won't get a short, I will get an integer. As well for float, I will get a double. As simple as that. So TLDR, if you have an integer data type, namely a char or a short, it's an int. <laughs> okay all right that's why uh here i have integer let me write uh a comment like type promotion type promotion like that here in the contrary uh if the specifier is s uh, i have to print str as an input i'm gonna have data and then we're gonna fetch with va arg data ap like that now you understand very well why i um put va list inside the struct right because ap it's fairly useful at this level and namely it's mandatory at this level and type is going to be a char star a pointer oh right in this video i want only to do this once because for integers i plan to do something different so yeah okay uh specifier so we're gonna start by print char of course so let's make another file that I call render uh, char. Let's see. We include like always all the stuff. So include printf.h. Very simply, here we have to render properly a char. So when we are dealing with chars, which are the flag that I care about? 
Or let's reason. Uh, it's gonna be left justified, zero space, ash and um, no, zero ash space and plus, right? So left justified, yes, zero no, space no, um, ash no, and plus no. We don't care about them, right? Doesn't make any sense, doesn't compute with charts. We only have left justified. Then we have width, right? These, of course, we have. We don't either have precision. Let's try to make some tests. All right, if I try to make, for example, width 10 and left justified, everything should be fine like that perfect if i say precision for example one i get undefined behavior precision with c conversion uh, or undefined behavior so you cannot have precision or better you can but you get undefined behavior um let's do with a plus of course this stuff doesn't make sense perfect space as well and you got the gist right with char we have to pay attention only to uh left justified and width pretty sick so let's write void print the char pointer to data so type data pointer data and the actual char so char c so let me fetch uh, the width uh, value so width simply do width is equal to data format dot width value i simply do that to make the code more readable i declare an internal local variable and I wanted to do all the times data format with value. And then what do I do? Well, I can immediately assume that if uh, um, with equal to one, I don't care, nothing to do, nothing to do. On the contrary, I do care and I have to pay attention only also to the left justified flag. So I can do, um, if with is major uh, than one, right? Major than the chart itself. And inside this uh, if, I have to check also if uh, I have left justified. So if data uh, format left justified, right? You do something else, you do something else. You understand the logic, right? I enter this block only if I have enough width. If I do have enough width, then I have to check if uh, I have left justification or not. Now, I need a function that is able to print uh, the actual spaces, an n amount of spaces in the buffer, right? Because if I have, for example, width um, 10, I need nine spaces. So let's create that function. Uh, function to uh, pad, basically, with um, spaces. We can call it put uh, char in the buffer and uh, n for the number of charts that i want to put for example as i told you if i have a, a width 10 i need nine spaces but i can also use this function for zeros so it's going to be a padding function pretty useful so it's going to take as an input the actual uh, char or here i made a mistake oh, char is going to be an int right for the type promotion thing so we're going to have um C, I'm going to type cast to a char here. Then uh, the actual numbers, so it's going to be n here. So the, uh, how many charts I want. So let's just implement beforehand so I have a clear understanding. So let's go back in our uh, buffer model and let's put this function. So this is going to be a function to write a char n times useful for padding with zeros and spaces. Of course, in the buffer, it's going to put in the buffer. So void uh, put char uh, buffer n as an input is going to take a char, so char c, um, an int that is going to be the precision, let's say. So how many n's? Uh, here you can also put n, right? Maybe precision is better. I don't know. We're going to revise. And then a pointer to data. So data. Yet. So now, uh, always thinking about the function itself, leaving alone, uh, I have a char, uh, precision, and data. So I check if immediately precision is minor equal to zero, you just return, you don't have to do nothing. Let's pretend I have this corner case, I pass this input. On the contrary, I say while precision minus minus, what do you do? Well, you write in the buffer, so we're gonna leverage the function that we already have here. So we're going to do write buffer, write buffer, data, and see. That's it. 
I guess. I'm gonna copy this, put short buffer, put in my header file. That's stuck. Perfect. Let's go back in my put chart. All right, so now we have access to this function. What do I do? Uh, if the format is left justified, first of all, you have to put the actual chart and then the padding, right? Because width is major than one. So you do put char buffer n. Uh, char c is going to be typecast char c. Precision is going to be only one, right? Because it's only one char, of course. And then data, done. So this is a function that is going to print the actual uh, char given as an input in the buffer. Then I'm going to copy this. And this time I'm going to pass, not char c, but I'm going to pass the padding. So I'm going to pass the space. Now, how many space do we need here? Well, it's going to be uh, the width, right? Width minus one, the chart itself. That's it, right? That's what we shall do. On the contrary, if the thing is not left justified, we are going to just copy this, but this time we are going to reverse. So first of all, we're going to write the spaces, which is going to be width minus one. And then we are going to write the actual chart, all right? On the contrary, if width is not major than one, you simply put the chart. So you're gonna copy again this, and at the very bottom, you put. That's it, right? We managed all the logic to write a simple chart because we care only about the uh, minus flag, uh, namely the left justified flag, and the width. Now let's copy the prototype of the render chart and we put in our header. We do render prototypes. And we have now access to this function from my printf model like that. So by now let's comment this string. And what is going on if I try to compile everything now? Okay, go. Dt file not found. That is this one. I guess there's something with the other file, printf.h. Probably I shouldn't use this one. It's inflating with the real one, with the real printf. So let's change printf.h with orange printf.h that and now of course i have to change in every file so orange printf h this no what is going on it's still the same <laughs> what am i including orange printf ah this one include tdf i guess that's probably my plugins vim plugins that are adding this stuff i don't know why all right let's try again oh, of course i need the main what an idiot all right let's um let's make another file for the main so i'm gonna do vmain.c so i'm gonna include my orange piccolo printf at the very top and then i do int main let's do test char so this is a function that is gonna test for char combinations now i'm just gonna do some ascii colors because it's pretty useful when you want to do the bugging to see clearly what is going on i'm gonna copy this ask chatgpt is gonna be one second and then I'm going to copy here in my header like that. Boom. All right. All right. So I created this uh, little test chart with uh, some combos. I have uh, the real printf and my piccolo printf, as you can see. They have the same input. I control also the charts returned. And yeah, I get some colors to understand properly what is going on. Let's try to, um, to compile and launch these tests. All right, this is a char for the first one is fine. Then I get, this is not correct. I get one char more. I'm gonna write two chars. Here again, another bug. So as you can see, there are bugs somewhere. Let's try to find out why. So render char. In this print char, I guess everything is fine. So we need to use some printf to help to find out what is going on. So I went to the parser model and I wrote this to check all the values if everything has, is indeed correct, if everything has been parsed correctly. So compile again and then launch. All right, on a parsing level, your width is equal to 10. This is correct. It seems like with the parsing, everything is fine. What is going on? I get one A more here. One char written more. Three hours later. All right, here, my friend, I did a very silly um, mistake, which is this one. I just need to do else here, of course, because I, here is when uh, indeed uh, if width is equal to one or uh, less 
<coughs> frankly, or less, nothing to do with, on the contrary, is major to one, right? My comments were pretty bad. They fooled also myself, <laughs> you see. All right, now everything should be fine. Because basically I say, if I have a width, well, in that case, I have to check if I have left justification. And in that case, I have to pad with spaces uh, only after the, the chart itself. On the contrary, you just plainly write the actual chart. Let's try to compile again and to launch. All right, now we are into business. As you can see, everything works properly. Took quite a lot <laughs> to find this silly bug, really. Anyway, um, for season, sorry, everything is fine, as you can see. I have the correct padding. Everything seems legit. If you want, these are the actual tests that I tried. Maybe you can check it out. You can stop the video and check for yourself. You can, as you can see, there are many combinations here, both from the real one and the fake one. Now, just for fun, I created this little model, which is piccolo.c, in which I have this ASCII heart piccolo. I'm just gonna copy this function. Now I'm gonna show you how to use this. Basically, I want in my main, every time to do something like that, uh, print piccolo, and then this piccolo is taking a string. So I have charts. So we compile and then we launch. And you will see that at the very top we have piccolo with the actual tests that we're gonna do just a silly thing to make it more fun so now we are gonna remove the tests for the parser given that this works so we can simply comment this all right and this is the actual output of our tests as you can see the char works properly right because it's fairly simple we only have to handle um, left justified and width very simple now here I have also some tests for the percent sign uh, and this is another uh, function specular do the other one for charts but only for percent sign compile and launch and I get my chart minus 42 okay so this is one of the values we set it with our enum so we have a parse error okay beautiful so let's go to the parser uh, where is the parse error here we come so it's here if not in specifiers so which are our specifiers oh of course i forgot to put the percent sign here like that because of course uh the percent sign itself can be also a specifier let's try to run again the thing all right this time everything works perfectly so also the percent sign still works so you see how powerful it is to have values for errors so you can see very very fast where you have to look for mistakes cool. so let's go back to printf uh, and as you can see we managed basically allegedly <laughs> to implement charts now it's time to implement print string okay so um let's create another file that i call uh, render str.c all the usual inclusion so include orange okay usual line of reasoning which are the flags i care about for strings well zero plus um space ash i don't care right these are only for numbers okay here the only one i care is uh the left justified uh, the width of course but also uh the precision so the string also require precision and for strings we have this word behavior right when i say let's make a simple example um s 10 precision true and here i have two here if i launch this i get full right only true if i have zero i have precision of zero right so i don't write anything only 10 spaces and if you have a uh, five something bigger i don't get a padding uh, with zeros of course like in numbers so we have to pay attention to this behavior precision behavior for strings so let's write void print uh, str the usual data type data so a reference to that and a pointer so char star s 
So as always, uh, when we deal with pointers, we have to beware for nulls, right? If nulls are given as an input, so if null is equal to s, what do you do in this case? Well, uh, in the printf, we got this behavior. So let's put here a null and let's run this. You see that I get the string null, actually the literal string null. So we can simply do like that. Uh, we say, um, s is equal to a literal string null like this in parentheses exactly like the string here basically we're saying hey in the case you give us an input a null pointer just change that pointer to a literal string null that you give here right because this uh, is just a pointer underneath the hood right all right so this problem is settled um so let's make it clear so step one check for null i can remove the graph step two what is step two well let's reason uh, from first principles we have the left justify the width and the precision to take care of uh, so i can say if data uh, format left justified right like always you do something else you do something else now we have to understand what now we saw that if precision value is a major or equal than the actual uh, string length is an influential. Nothing really changes. I don't have a padding of zeros like the integers. So here, if less justified, do something. Uh, what is the first thing that you have to do? Well, you have to put the actual string, right? Put string um, is the first step here, nested inside this logic. And then, well, second step is uh, put eventual spaces right put eventual padding spaces like that you understand the logic i guess here is exactly the reverse so in the else branch it's gonna be first put eventual padding spaces and only then you put a string it's very simple right that's how it works so we saw that if precision is major equal than the actual um, string length Precision is influential, right? Nothing really changes. Precision kicks in with strings only when that number, that value is less than the string length. So we can say if um, data formats uh, precision value, right, is present. Right? If I have a precision here, I want to say, what is the thing? Well, if it is major equal than zero, basically here I'm asking. Let me show you that is the flag precision set and i know that this flag is set if it is major or equal than zero why major or equal well because in my parsing phase um i've set my format precision value to minus one every time my precision value is to minus one because actually i can set my precision to zero so that's why i use this minus one so if i happen to have a precision you have to print a string exactly the number of uh, the precision right of course we have to take into consideration if the precision is bigger than the actual string and so forth so uh, i'm gonna do an ad hoc function that i call put str buffer n for precision now we check how to do that then we do a branch else so if i don't have any precision you simply uh, put the string again with this but this time you're gonna use the actual string line so first thing first let's implement this put string buffer n it's gonna be easier to understand where i'm going so we go in my buffer model in which i have all these functions fairly useful to manage the buffer a function to write a string with a refined control over precision of course to print a string in the buffer in buffer so the prototype is going to be fairly similar to this one i'm going to just copy and i'm going to say just here char star s okay so the line of reasoning is going to be always the same i consider this function just a, a lonely black box so which are the inputs that can get to this well precision so i say if precision um let's do if precision is minor equal zero you simply return nothing to do on the contrary i have to say let's pretend i have 
the string hello as an input and uh, precision uh, is equal to three right i want to write only um l right like that but if precision is uh 42 well i just write a low you see so i have to say while uh, um precision and at string right because if the string is over is over so these are the two conditions that i want to check what do you do well you write in buffer so you call your function write buffer data and you pass the char which is at str that here we can increase with plus plus and here i can also do precision minus minus just to save a few lines something on those lines All right so i'm gonna copy so i'm gonna change here to put char but put str buffer oh here i have s not str anyway no mistakes like that so i'm gonna copy now the actual prototype here past here like that all right um do, do, do. i guess it's fairly simple right to understand i have this function that is able to print with i precision a string and yeah as, as simple as that let's go back to my render string so now we can use the function so let's do the reasoning again let's remove this so if i have a precision you're gonna put str buffer n you pass the actual pointer and then you put the actual precision so it's going to be data format precision value then the data okay so if the precision is bigger than string len nothing really happens because we have the sentinel backslash zero that is going to finish previously the loop so when the string is over it's over on the contrary if i have precision which is less than actual string len well i get the precision this time because the loop is going to finish when i exhaust the actual precision right if i don't have an actual precision you're gonna just print the actual string and this time uh, what is the precision that we want to pass well this time we need the actual string len so we're gonna make a fast function string len so let me write here as len with um, s as an input we're gonna do immediately in utils so utils very fast i have int s len on char star s immediately we check for null so we say if null is equal to s and i can use recursion here i can say if null is equal to s or not at s simply return else or better you can do immediately return a recursive like this you do s plus one plus one return zero here at the top this is a silly recursion to get the length of, an, uh, of a string pretty fast and have a, a check of potential nulls i think it's not terribly difficult i i hope <laughs> otherwise just use an iteration it, it's even better recursion is pretty bad it's just cool because you can write highly concise pieces of code it, it's elegant uh, in my opinion all right let's just copy these here in utils okay let's go back in my string render string here it comes and now we have slan ready okay to recap if i have the left justified condition first of all i check if i have a precision if i do have a precision i write the string with the correct number of chars on the contrary i just write uh, the, the the string directly and then i have to pad with uh, spaces all right how do we tackle this problem well i want to have a badass function that is able to calculate beforehand how many spaces we should put with strings so it's going to be int set str padding uh spaces extremely verbose but makes a point the so type data data and the actual string like that of course this is going to be a static function that lives all inside this model all right so immediately i'm gonna get the len of the string uh so i'm gonna do len is equal to s len s i do like that just to call the s len function only once and then i have to ponder all the possible combinations so first of all i check is there a width right how do i do that well first check if width that's well, to check if uh, width is available, you simply say if data 
format dot width is um major than zero only major because i can only set width to values major major than zero as i saw maybe i'm wrong i don't know so here we have width we have also to check for uh precision eventually precision i'm gonna say if uh, uh data format dot precision value is uh, this time major equal than zero right because this value uh precision can be set to uh, zero so every time i refresh all this data precision value is set also to minus one that's why i do major equal else if to be pedantic i'm gonna rewrite again this so i'm gonna do like that minor than zero but uh to check but in this context i don't want to only check if uh, the flag is turned on or off i want to check if uh, the precision is major than string len actually so i'm gonna write len or better only major and here if it is minor equal what is the thing here well in this case in influential in influential because if precision is major than the string land nothing is going to happen here i have to write precise n from str right when precision is less than string land so here will change to n and here we need only minor not minor equal i hope you understand what i'm doing here i'm just talking to myself maybe it's confusing so let me boost a little bit this i'm gonna move this and here at the very top i want to put first of all is there a precision also so if data format um, precision value this time major equal than zero like that so is there a precision here is written okay now makes more sense we have a nested uh, ifs check if precision here it means that we have a width but we don't have a precision so, like that hopefully this is a blueprint <laughs> that i wanted to do as you can see as long as i'm coding i'm thinking about solutions so sorry if it is confusing a little bit all right basically is written here you have all the logic if i have a width right if I have a width, so potentially it's paces. Do I also have a precision? In the case you run this logic. On the contrary, if you don't have a precision, you have only a width. What do you do? This is the simplest case, right? This else. So simplest case. Basically, the padding is equal to um, the width minus the string length. Now we can do something smart. I can do here uh, void. I don't want to return anything i do void and here in my header i'm gonna put in utils uh int padding spaces like that all right so i'm gonna stock inside my struct padding spaces this is important because basically all the integers will require also these uh, different variables so i can recycle these so what do i do in the simplest case here well i say data format padding spaces is equal to what well it's going to be equal to data format width minus i go on the next line with this backslash len right the len of the actual string you understand this point right basically if i have something like that um 10 percent 10 s and the string uh, is hello the final output is going to be something like that gonna be one two three four five and then the string hello right so that's why i get these padding spaces which is equal to the difference between the width and the length of the string as simple as that uh, now when we jump into precision land also what is going to happen well i get if format precision value is major than len i have i actually have the same scenario as here right just gonna copy this line like that because uh, when precision is bigger than len is an influential or the corner when precision is minor than the actual len let me do a simple example here i have 10 uh 3 and the string is again hello what is the result you get well you get one two three four five six seven spaces and l right so i get seven spaces which is equal to what well we do data format padding spaces 
as well data format with value minus this time precision right minus three so data format precision value that's it that's the logic to get the spaces for a string right then if we go back in our um function here i just handle the left justified and right justified call as you want so first of all i put the string with a precision and then i have to put the eventual padding spaces so now it's time to harvest our job all our logic we're gonna call at the very top just here so the second step is gonna become uh, setting the actual spaces setting the space so we get set padding data and s it's beautiful because everything is going to happen just inside my structure so i get the correct spaces immediately saved there third step just write in the buffer just write just write with um justifying justification if there is a justification right so what is the logic here um if it is left justified you put a streak and then you put the actual spaces so you do put uh char right we use our function put char buffer n and the char is going to be a space what is the precision well we now have it's going to be actually data uh, format uh, padding spaces and then we pass the data you see what is going on we do exactly the same here but in reverse so if it is not left justified you put first of all the actual padding spaces right here at the very top and then you put a string with this logic so i'm just gonna copy this here so it's just an ordering issue as you can see all right i guess that's it for strings let me just make some tests and we're gonna check it out uh, first of all let me copy print string here in my editor file like that all right let's go back in my printf here i'm gonna uncomment this all right i just made another series of tests here compile and launch here it comes so i have a special b in canon it's fine 47 charts speed speed all right okay for my internal tests it seems like that everything works so here are the tests maybe stop the video by the way i'm gonna push everything on github so you can check no problem so these are the tests i made with the actual flags so i guess we moved a little bit on with this printf and uh again i managed to <laughs> collapse my brain we're gonna finish with the third video with the actual x upper x pointer and whatever all right see you on the next one thank you my friend